Hello, welcome to Alex Nation. It's November 1st, and with a new month comes a new incentive. That's right. This month, we are incentivizing with our brand new product, Pulse. That is, uh, if you enroll with a bundle or device and a subscription during this month, mm -hmm. you are going to receive, your new person is going to receive Pulse. A great way to, uh, the word's getting out, right? People are loving Pulse, they're using it in so many different ways, right? Oh yeah, right? it's great for exercising. You use yeah, it every single morning. Yeah, personal records to weight loss. We see everything yes. in between. Yep. And, and right now, as that word gets out, people are seeing it, people are asking about it. This is their chance to get it for free if they enroll under those circumstances. It's a so. good, good month to enroll. Uh, now, we are getting ready to leave for Australia. We have a day of discovery in Australia on uh, November 9th through the 11th. So that means that next week, November 8th, we will not be having a weekly update call. Mm. I know. We only do it. Well, normally we only do that twice yeah. a year. Um because but, of because of days of discovery, but we added a day of discovery this year yeah, in Australia. Yeah, when you so. add another event, it kind of makes uh, we you only know, miss, difficult. We only missed three calls in 52 weeks. I think we're okay. Yeah, we're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last week, we had a contest about inner voice. Yes, we wanted to know when, where, why you use inner voice, yes, right? Yes, yes. And we were going to give, we're going to give three winners the new rose-colored lens yeah. um, that goes with our glasses. Yeah, with glasses. Yeah. That's exactly right. Do you want to draw first? Yes, I Okay. Do. All right. Mix them up. Mix these up. Everyone loves inner voice. We had a lot of entries. Yeah, a lot of papers. And I got a few in my hand, so I'm only going to get one. Oh, here's like a one-liner. Uh, Jenna Vogel. I do inner voice in the morning. I listen while walking. I use it because I know trauma is holding on that needs to let go of me. That's oh, good. Oh, I like, like that, that way you worded that. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations, Jana. All right, next one. Do I only have one? Oh, it's folded. <laughs> this is Marianne Hay. I utilize the inner voice in the mornings. I find the evaluation of emotions, possible pathological causes, and suggestions for supplements or therapies very helpful. I firmly believe there are strong ties to the emotions and areas of disease in the body. It's known as the mind-body connection. The dynamics of our being are affected by the internal energy and much is governed by to toxic emotions. The inner voice kick starts my time for meditation where I can release those emotions that are hindering healing. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's a great one. Yes. All right, and our last winner of the red rose lenses. Here we go. This is Debbie Carlson. If it were only the inner voice, the AO scan subscription is worth every penny. <laughs> I start out my mornings with inner voice while I'm also reading and meditating and thanking God for all he has done in my life. I am happy that it, the inner voice pulse tones are now offered on continuous play. Thank you so much, Solex. I can't wait to win the rose colored glasses. And you there won. you did, Debbie. Congratulations. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Congratulations, all three of you. We will get those sent out to you tomorrow. And let's talk about our top and rollers. Guess what? We have ties. For both. In the week of October 23rd to 29th, right? Yes, let's start with our tie for second place. All right, Nadia Lutz, congratulations. And Nicole Vincent, well done to both of you. Yeah, great job. And then first place always gets a Solex, well, not always. As long as we have them, yes. you get a Solex silver coin. And the first person to get a Solex silver coin for being in first place this week is Sheila Day. Yeah, Sheila, yeah, 17th silver coin. Yeah, <laughs> or more. Yeah, that's awesome. And New Face Healing, congratulations, both of you. Uh, New Face Healing, I, has, have we seen that name before? I don't know if we have. I don't think we have. Congratulations, you get your Solex silver coin. You, that means you're in the legacy group. That means that you have access to the benefits of being in that group, That's right. right. Well done to all of you. All right, now we're going to move on to our call. We get to hear from Deb Bruce this week. Good evening. Welcome to another Wednesday night call. And I just wanted to express appreciation for all of you that I met at the Day of Discovery. I think that the Day of Discovery this year will actually go down as being historic in how elevated the frequency of the room was, how many things new we were introduced to how much advancement we're gonna make with all the things that Solex offered during Day of Discovery. It really was pretty amazing. And it was great to meet so many of you. I really appreciated meeting you, talking to you. And that being said, let's dive in tonight's call. 
Now, tonight's call is going to be a little bit different because I went down some pretty deep rabbit holes. And the more I went down a rabbit hole, the more rabbit holes I found. So the subject tonight is going to be a little bit controversial. Um, I looked into so many studies to do tonight's call. And I'm going to encourage you all right from the get-go to do your research on this subject. I'm going to see if I can include uh, just one slide uh, in the presentation so that you can see a few of the studies that I looked into. But I, I looked into probably 20, 30 different government studies, uh, different things um, by all types of different organizations, uh, different rat reports, medical reports. Um, it really was pretty fascinating. So that's being said, tonight's subject is salt and hydration. Okay. Now I'm going to, I have to use quite a few notes tonight just because I want this technically to be correct for uh, what I research. So it's going to be a little bit different than my normal just talking presentation, but I really want you guys to uh, get some of the details about this that I found fascinating. But keep in mind that the details I'm giving you is really um, it's just the top of the salt shaker. You can dive so deep into this that it's just really fascinating to look into it. So that being said, uh, salt's been the underdog for uh, many years. It's been blamed for things like high blood pressure, heart issues, other ailments. And what is emerging and growing is science and increasing studies showing that salt is not necessarily the culprit that it has been represented as being over the years. The current government recommendations for uh, salt is less than 2.3 grams per day. The growing body of research is increasingly showing that optimal health outcomes are reached at sodium levels that are two to three times that which is currently recommended. This is where it got fascinating. There was a 2011 JAMA, J-A-M-A study with evidence that four to six grams of daily sodium was linked to lower risk of heart attack and stroke than sodium intake in line with the recommendation from government agencies, which is at 2.3 grams that I just mentioned a minute ago. So salt, sodium and chloride, and you, it's not an optional mineral. Salt helps in regulating fluid balance outside your cells. It helps with your blood flow. It conducts nerve impulses in your nervous system and your brain. It's instrumental in, in helping actually maintain blood pressure, and it helps transport nutrients through your gut. So how is this actually um, accomplished? Well, salt's a combination of electrolytes. And electrolytes are substances that, substances that have a positive or negative electrical charge when they dissolve in water. So an adult body is over 60% water, which means that almost every cell and fluid that is in your body contains electrolytes to help your body control and regulate uh, chemical reactions, to maintain the balance of fluid inside and outside your cells. And you can start to see the connection between sodium and water, right? So salt is sodium and chloride. Sodium has the positive charge. Chloride has the negative charge. When you put them together, they balance each other out. However, when you dissolve them in water, what they start doing is they start conducting electricity. So good sources of salt also have trace minerals that uh, track the water through the cell membrane into the cell. So that's another interesting um, facet of uh, sodium and chloride. Now, what are the symptoms of electrolyte sodium uh, lack? There can be confusion, irritability, diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, headaches, irregular or uh, fast heart rate, arrhythmias, muscle cramps, muscle spasms, weakness. This is just a, some of the symptoms that there can be when somebody is lacking in electrolytes or sodium. One of the results of, of, of research is that people are becoming more aware that they have the need for good hydration. Many are complaining, however, when they increase their hydration that they're constantly having to use the bathroom. We kind of talked about this before on other Wednesday night calls, but let's reiterate why 
the water isn't being utilized correctly by the body. This will show up in your scanner as an issue in the adrenal glands, uh, in the PDFs as far as a one or a nine on aldosterone. It'll also show up as lymphatic frequencies, artery and circulation, volume frequencies out of balance, and your body systems report will over and over again say increase hydration. A lot of you have seen this in your body system reports and have thought that it was just a cut and paste that constantly just was a fixture in the report. It's not. The, the assessment behind the scenes is coming up by your brain that there is the need for more hydration. So there are a number of components that can play into this. And one of them is sodium. So good hydration is not gulping down water. Our research shows that gulping down too much water too fast can actually be harmful. In some cases, it has actually resulted in death with some athletes as far as just gulping down massive amounts of water really quickly. So we've heard over and over again, oh, drink your eight cups of water a day, Eat, drink your eight cups of water a day. But one of the glaring omissions in that, in that recommendation is in fact electrolytes. So you've got sodium, you've got potassium, you've got chloride, you've got magnesium, you've got calcium, you've got phosphate, you've got bicarbonates. Just gulping down tons of plain water can actually imbalance those electrolytes. Good hydration is actually having enough water, but at the same time having balanced electrolytes. So there's some different factors to this that play into this equation. And one of them's diet. And Recently, over the last number of years, we've seen a lot of people doing uh, low-carb and ketogenic diets. So what's happened with that? Well, a low-carb diet keeps insulin low, and that consequently makes your kidneys excrete sodium at an increased rate. So sometimes people on the low-carb or ketogenic diets are actually lacking in salt, sodium, and chloride. Paleo and whole food diets. Uh, prior to changing their lifestyle and going to paleo or whole food diets, processed foods often were up to 70% of a person's uh, lifestyle. And those processed foods had a high amount of sodium. So switching from those high processed lifestyle foods and then going with paleo and whole foods or with the low carb and ketogenic makes such a shift in the body that often it makes it where people are actually lacking in salt, in sodium and chloride. And another thing is fasting. We've seen intermittent fasting uh, coming into play where a lot of people are using intermittent fasting. So just like the low carb diets, the fasting minimizes the uh, insulin, which increases the sodium excretion and decreases uh, sodium as far as taking it in from food because they're fasting during the fasting period. So diet can play uh, a part in people actually needing more salt because of switching how they were eating to how they currently are eating in a healthier fashion. In the study cited online against sodium, the people tested for sodium, this was interesting, the people that were tested for sodium levels were on high fat, high sugar processed diets. Uh, sodium was listed as the culprit, but there, there was no reference made to the negative impact on the body of um, highly processed foods, high sugar amounts, um, bad fats that they were taking in, and, that, and just that deliver a large amount of sodium. And it totally ignored the fact that the overall package was the problem, not just the sodium in the study. What are some of the external causes that can make it where people are needing um, more salt, more sodium and chloride. Well, some of it is sweat loss and uh, other external causes. Hard, long exercise can cause the need for more salt. Uh, temperature and humidity can make it where people are uh, excreting uh, sodium and are needing to have uh, more in their system. Clothing to keep warm gets it where people sweat more and they're needing to have more sodium. Sauna use is another big one where people excrete a lot and need more sodium. And then an interesting one was altitude. A lot of people will go to a higher altitude and go to cooler temperatures, you know, fall, uh, winter, spring, they're skiing, they're snowboarding, 
uh, snowmobiling, and that higher altitude with colder temperatures makes it where a lot of times the fluids that they're consuming are uh, less in, in the way of hydration and more in the way that they don't have electrolytes. They're drinking a chocolate, they're drinking coffee, they're drinking caffeinated tea, they're doing things that actually add to the hydration issue. So another consideration is sources of salt. And I found that this was really interesting. Um, Morton salt is bleached. It's uh, got dextrose added to it. Um, it's just not a salt that's really good to be used. But it's really interesting that it also has uh, anti-caking agents. And the anti-caking agents uh, can have contain aluminum. So that's one of the reasons where a lot of the table salts are not necessarily beneficial. Um, it's processed to be white with the anti-caking ingredients associated with aluminum. Now, the Himalayan salt, it was interesting looking into that. Uh, Himalayan salt is actually mined outside of the Himalayan mountains. It's kind of not exactly where it comes from. But the interesting thing about it is that there's all kinds of different mining techniques. And those mining techniques between blasting and machinery and uh, other ways of mining it can make it where some of the uh, Himalayan salts have a lot of heavy metals in them. A lot of the Himalayan salts can test as having contaminants in it. Uh, sea salt, that was another one. Sea salt, the most recent studies are starting to show more and more plastic particles in sea salt uh, due to the widespread plastic in the oceans. And then uh, the Celtic salt, so far that was the one that had the least uh, negativity associated with it due to the harvest uh, practices that they have with it. But I suggest that you do your own research on the salts that you prefer and see where they come from, what the harvesting uh, techniques are, how they mine it, how they get it out, you know, how clean the conditions are. There was tons and tons and tons of information on just the different sources of salt. Uh, so do your research for sure. So what about sugar? Well, for starters, uh, a high sugar diet can induce uh, dehydration. Um, there was a study by the National Institute of, of Health, and it showed that rehydration with soft drink-like beverages exacerbates dehydration, worsens dehydration, and was associated with renal injury in rats. I know, the poor rats, right? But the study actually carried over into having the same effect on humans. So there was concern about the sugar as far as the dehydration. The long and short was that non-hydrating soda and fruit juices don't help the problem of dehydration. But it's not limited to soda. There's a lot of rehydration solutions, um, including the hydration strategy that was sanctioned by the World Health Organization that intentionally includes glucose in the formula. And the claim was that sugar aids with hydration. So what data is there around this combination? It was really interesting. Glucose actually helps shuttle salt and water through your gut and into your bloodstream. And it makes it useful in, in like extreme dehydration. We've heard of it being used with cholera. We've heard it being used with uh, babies with dehydration. But you actually need glucose to hydrate. Well, there's several brands of uh, drinks that you can chug down that claim that sugar is necessary in order to hydrate. I'm going to let you draw your own conclusions about those brands, but let's look into the data of what is actually behind that claim because it's pretty interesting. Uh, there was a Robert K. Crane who did a study on uh, glucose co uh, co-transporters is it to cure and it was from the National Library of Medicine. And the study was fascinating because it was a reference report on how oral hydration therapy using simple sugar helps chauffeur the water and sodium through the gut and into circulation. In other words, the glucose en enhances uh, fluid and electrolyte um, absorption. By some estimates, this particular oral hydration therapy has actually saved 
um, millions of lives. It's been especially helpful, like we said, in fighting dehydration caused by uh, cholera, uh, bacterial illnesses like it, and severe di diarrhea. So today we know that the way that this mechanism works is there's a protein called uh, SGLT1. It's a sodium glu glucose co-transporter, and it's in the small intestine. Essentially, what it does is it facilitates the absorption of sugar, fluids, and sodium when glucose and salt are present. There's a, another transporter, SGLT-2, that has a small play as well, but the SGLT-1 is the main player in the sodium glucose uh, transporter action that's in your gut. So many rehydration products leverage that SGLT by including glucose in the formula. But the claim is that you can't effectively hydrate without sugar. And is that true? Well, going down that rabbit hole, I'm just going to be blunt. Glucose, glucose may help you absorb sodium and fluids, but you don't need it to stay hydrated. So guess what? Glucose isn't the only sodium co-transporter playing a game in town. What else helps bring the sodium into the blood? Potassium and chloride. Phosphorus. This electrolyte does it by using the uh, sodium phosphate co-transporter. Uh, there's uh, BHB. You produce this ketone by burning fat in the liver. Uh, BHB serves as a sodium co-transporter as well. Um, it's beta-hydroxybutyrate. Uh, then uh, the, bu the butyrate itself is a microbial metabolite. And it, it's produced when your gut bacteria digest fiber and it boosts fluid and sodium absorption. Amino acids, these building blocks of protein actually enhance electrolyte absorption. Secondly, sodium and fluids don't require co-transporters even to be absorbed. All of those help, but they aren't even required. They can actually diffuse passively through the gut. So finally, there's clinical evidence that drinking salty water with no sugar included was used to, on ultra endurance athletes who were going into that, that severe uh, dehydration called uh, hyponatremia. And they found that drinking salty water was just as effective on them as if they IV'd the solution. And so if you actually needed glucose in order to have uh, the rehydration work, you wouldn't have seen that result in those athletes. So that was pretty fascinating too. To sum it all up, you don't need sugar to stay hydrated. You do need salt. Salt provides sodium and sodium is essential not only to your health, but to also good healthy electrical frequencies in the body. As the sodium levels fall, there can be symptoms, decreased energy, headaches, cramps, confusion, brain frog. Um, and these can be documented in your scanner as well. Okay. It can show up as ones and nines. So what can cause low sodium levels? There's a number of things. The main risk factors are heart problems, kidney problems, liver disease, the cancer, diuretics, vomiting, diarrhea, excessive sweating, and drinking too much plain water. So most people actually don't take in enough salt. Now, there's a caution here. People with heart disease, kidney disease, or that have been diagnosed with hypertension should consult their primary care, caregivers as to the amount that they should uh, consume. There's also people that are uh, sodium, have sodium sensitivity. So it's not that everybody should immediately just drastically include, uh, increase their sodium without consulting their primary caregiver. Drinking bottled water has become an, ab an absolute national pastime, uh, but adding salt uh, to the diet has been majorly discouraged. You're going to have to do your research to see uh, all of these things that I have been talking about and how the, the research and the science behind it is starting to show more and more that more salt is needed. Consider that, ironically, the science is actually starting to clearly show that avoiding salt can actually be bad for the heart. Uh, Low-sodium diets aren't just becoming associated with uh, higher blood pressure, but also they're starting to see that really low-sodium diets 
have, are starting to have increased rates of heart attack, stroke, and high blood pressure, ironically. So consider uh, for yourself that you may need more salt, not less, good salt. If you're hesitant about the uh, statements that we're making tonight, research yourself and just see for yourself the emerging scientific evidence uh, for actually consuming uh, more good salt. So magnesium and potassium are very helpful with salt. You can check in your scanner each day and see if you're lacking in either one. And even if you're needing to supplement with magnesium or potassium in order to facilitate the uh, function of salt in your body. Pay attention to your body systems reports. If hydration keeps showing up and showing up and showing up, that you may actually need more sodium and you may need to, once again, you may need to uh, supplement with the magnesium and the potassium. Eight, eight glasses a day of water has, has always been kind of an arbitrary guideline, but when you really consider it, if you're drinking soda, coffee, tea that dehydrate, are you sweating a lot? Are there cold weather issues that are making it where you're reaching more for dehydrating drinks like we just talked about? Do you exercise at high sweat rates? Listen to your scanner. Your brain is smart and it is going to give you indications if you need more salt, more sodium and chloride. So think about dropping the sugary electrolyte drinks. Do your research. You may need to just add a pinch of really good salt to the water that you're drinking. And then there are also uh, no sugar uh, products out there that are available for people that want to start adding it uh, to their water. Um, there's ones like Ultima that are, are low sugar. There's uh, an excellent company called LMNT, the letters LMNT, that has tons of the science in it that I presented tonight and has hundreds of links to, to go into the different uh, studies by the, the different um, medical societies and, and just do the research and get even more information for yourselves. So you'll be able to, uh, I'm going to try to put a, uh, I'll put a screenshot that shows, um, or a PowerPoint slide that shows some of the things that you can look at, the reference by uh, Robert Kane on the co-transporters co that we talked about. There also was uh, an intersalt it was called, it was an international study of electrolyte excretion and blood pressure. And it was uh, done by the Intersalt Cooperative Research Group. And it was a fascinating study um, on sodium and blood, blood pressure. Interestingly, the, the uh, World Health Organization recently did a 99 page review of sodium. And going through the 99 pages, it's really interesting. There were no peer review findings. The studies were done on people that already had high blood pressure. And there was some obvious uh, cherry picking to kind of support uh, the report in going through it. So uh, that was another notation that I made that there was, there was kind of a bias in the report that was recently done where they're trying to cut back even more on um, the recommendations for sodium. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation. You know, I thought about some of the other things over the years that were vilified, so to speak, and then came around like for a while, it was uh, don't eat eggs, you know, the eggs and it's, you know, connected with cholesterol, this, that, and the other. And then they found out that the yolks were actually created in eggs with the less lecithin component in it that actually offsets the cholesterol and now eggs are considered to be you know good quality eggs the ones that are raised right and don't have all the added stuff are considered as a as a good food to consume another one was uh, i grew up in the era of it's not nice to fool mother nature and then they were trying to get everybody to eat margarine and then you did the research into the margarine and it turns out that it's black to begin with they dye it so that it's white they add in yellow color and yeah, that kind of fell off the scene as far as being something that's really beneficial. They kind of went back to real butter. So there's a, there's a lot of times that science vilifies something, but over the years, research starts to come out that shows um, that they really shouldn't have had the bad reputation that they had. 
And I can tell you, you dig into some of these rabbit holes that I went down and you'll start to see that um, you might need to adjust some your view of whether or not salt should be vilified, research the quality of the ones that you're consuming, and actually uh, look into your scanner. Look into your scanner and your vitals report, your body systems report, um, all the recommendations that are done. T test your supplements that are good partners with salt, with sodium and chloride, that are going to make it where those electrical impulses in the body and the need for salt are going to work more efficiently. And then look at your lifestyle in general. Have you recently changed from a high processed, high salt diet? And now you actually don't have much sodium going into your system at all because of the fact that you've cut out all of those foods that were high sodium, but you actually are needing some supplementation to have the body work properly. So think about all the information, research it some more. It's been a pleasure bringing to you the research that I got to do. And I really just got to touch on the surface uh, of all the information that I actually found. So look forward to another Wednesday night call with you in the future. And uh, we love scanning. Hope you have a nice evening. You know, Lauren, in our scanning uh, experience, right, uh, protocol, how we scan every day, one of the things we should make sure, and we talk about this pretty often, is being properly hydrated. Right. Right. There's, there's uh, a, you know, when we talk about frequency, when we talk about energy, a great conductor of energy is always, always water, water. Right. Yep. And we've talked about the fourth phase of water, that gel-like that wraps around the fascia of basically every body system. That's right. And it is a high, super highway of signaling right there. And so we should, I mean, there are different ways to properly hydrate. There's a bunch of different strategies, but coupling with that also is the proper kind of detoxing experience that yeah. hydration does with our bodies, right? The elimination is, is as important as the hydration is. Yeah, it is. So. It is. And, and many of you, many of you have been exposed uh, to our X by Solex, our great, uh, Mop and broom, broom, right? Yeah, and not again, chisel. No, 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 yeah. no chisel. Not hammer and chisel, <laughs> but mop and broom. Yeah, and you know, you you were just talking to me uh, this morning about your experience with it this last time. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of making sure that there's a right balance of fibers as well as the the prebiotics, the the right support to the bacterial system in the gut, mm -hmm. right? And I've always kind of been a fan of this, and and use different products and explore different products. I love X and I kind of have my own regimen. Yep. Right. I take it on a, a regular pace throughout the year. Uh, and usually my body knows, right. Uh, um, I'll, I'll kind of get this nudging of, okay, it's time to take X. And what do you know? It's timely, it's time. right? It's timely. Right. And it just helps me feel in balance. The interesting thing I was telling you this morning was like the last round of mm -hmm. X that I normally would do. I just didn't happen to have any on my shelf at home. My mistake, right? And so I just kind of bypassed it, even though I felt that the need to take X and to clear out and balance my, my gut, um, I just didn't. And it was a nagging thing over and over for weeks upon weeks upon weeks until finally it was like, it's time. You better do something, yeah. right? And it's funny, we tell, we tell people all the time, Listen to your body. Yeah. And your body was talking to you. It was. And you were ignoring that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. So. And the, the, the interesting thing is like for me, X, like when I take it in that regimen, right, uh, which for me is about every other month, you know, for me, um, just because I feed my diet with quite a bit of fiber anyways, yeah. typically, but I use that for a balancing effect. Well, I had missed that. And normally every other month, I'm usually going on in a three for maybe five days, depends on how things go, right? And how mm -hmm. balanced I feel across those three to five days. Well, the challenge here was I've passed those markers or I'm in those markers and, and not feeling the balance because I missed my prior missed marker, yep. right? Yep. Well, that's a long way to say, hey, look, what if we? What, how about we give away X, right? As part of the hydration effort. Tell us how you utilize X. You know, what's, your, what's your protocol? What's your regimen for using X? How often would you use X and, how, and, and is it more frequent? Is it less frequent? One thing we do want to tell yeah. people, in this case, less is more. Yeah. So it's not something you want to do every day. No, 
No, so, no. And, and the real key is if, uh, you know, if your bowels get pretty loose. That's your indicator. That's your indicator. Like time to pause. Let's, let's, uh, we've done enough, right? Yeah. We've done enough. Because what you're trying to do is balance the gut so that you have massive, absor massive right. absorption in that area of the body, which is what you need, including hydration. That's right. And that's the key. When you're taking X, make sure you get a good 12 to 16 ounces of yeah. liquid water with that. Yeah. I usually mix it. And then I'll clean out my glass with a little bit more water. And, and then, then a little bit later, yeah. I'll chase it again with yeah, another 12 good. ounces. Just that's my, my thing. So comment on this call, not on the live chat, but on the call. What is your, what is your protocol for using X? How do you use it? And what pace? How frequent? And how, what kind of duration? What are you looking for in order to know that X is effective for you? And how it's affected your life, how it's influenced your life. Yeah, I think that that's fantastic. And next week, we'll draw a name and we'll give away three. three next week. All right, everybody. Thank you. See ya. So, this is a good blue oh, I screwed up so many times. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you can't say that. You can't say that. I've cleared half of it out until next week. When we're just having a regular scanning experience, the couple <laughs> scratch that. Let's, let's rewind. <laughs> you know, Lauren, one of the things that we should do as part of our, our protocol with scanning is making sure we're properly hydrated. Yep, properly hydrated and properly... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't even know where you are going, so I, I, don't know like, where I'm going. I, couldn't, I couldn't help you. I was trying to help you, but I didn't know where to go.